Morning to you once again. Thank you so much for still being with us here in Morning at NTV. Wednesday's edition does uh, take on another bend yet again in our Kickstarter, reducing barriers to accessing fistula treatment, as well as looking at the improving quality of life for women with fistula. Now, the World Health Organization estimates that worldwide you do have between 50,000 to 100,000 women develop fistula every year, and 2 million women live with this untreated fistula in Asia as well as sub-Saharan Africa but the exact number remains difficult to measure and then within the sub-Saharan Africa Uganda to be exact has the highest known prevalency of the disease with an estimated lifetime prevalency of 19.2 per every 1,000 women of reproductive age now the data of the last two demographic and health surveys show that one to 2% of Ugandan women have symptoms of fistula, of whom only 62% have sought treatment. In this data, it has piqued interest in a fistula camp by Mulago Specialized and Neonata Hospital, and here to explain to us more about the burden of this disease in the country and what are the intended objectives of the camp, but more so what is the future remedy of the condition here in Uganda. I am joined by Dr. Evelyn Nabunia, who who is the executive director with Mulago Specialized and Neonato Hospital. Good morning to you, doctor. You're most welcome. Thank you, Priscilla. Good morning, and good morning, our viewers. Mm -hmm. yes. Let's talk about the disease. First of all, give us a description of the burden of uh, the disease and uh, the use of the superlatives not being feared. Thank you. Fistula, probably to help viewers know, some people out there may not exactly know what fistula is. This is an abnormal opening. Mm -hmm. In this case, obstetric fistula is an opening between the birth canal, what is called the vagina, and the surrounding areas. It could be the bladder, it could be the rectum. So it's called an obstetric fistula because it's following childbirth. So there are problems of prolonged obstructed labor when labor is not progressing mm -hmm. and the head of the baby is pressing on those areas. It's pressing on the tissue mm -hmm. which eventually cause damage and cause leakage of urine. Mm. So that's how it happens. And in Uganda, as you explained, it was estimated about 200,000 women were living with fistula. That was in the UDHS of 2011. However, we know that in the recent UDHS, the maternal indices have improved, maternal mortality and also morbidity has reduced, so we believe that this number has reduced. So what happens mm -hmm. when someone gets fistula? There's constant leakage of urine. You can imagine a woman leaking urine without all your the control. Time. Mm. Uncontrollable leakage of urine. And this could also happen with feces which could also cause a very bad odor. Mm -hmm. So because of such an odor that is present all the time, such women tend to have stigma, they tend to be social, socially isolated, they are living in shame, mm -hmm. and it's really a burden to them. It causes negative relationships. We've seen divorce happening because the partner or husband is no longer able to stay with a wife. So because of the magnitude of this problem, the consequences, as you've seen, and the burden being more in the less developed countries, in sub-Saharan sub Africa, you find that this explains the superlative description of that you've been talking about. Okay. Yes. All right. So in terms of the treatment available for this condition, mm -hmm. is it treatment to cure or treatment to manage? Okay, when it comes to treatment, there are different areas. There, there's treatment when a problem has occurred. So depending on the severity of the problem, mm -hmm. when a patient presents, sometimes they may present with infections. Those need to be treated. Some of them have very small fistula, and there's an intervention of catheterization so that the blood rests and those small fistula can heal. While many others may need surgery, actual surgery, where the fistula surgeons are able to repair that defect because there's a defect in there. Mm -hmm. 
So that is treatment when it has occurred. But there is prevention part, which is very important, mm -hmm. because we know that fistula is preventable and it's also treatable in most cases. So how do we prevent it? There are many things that can be done to prevent this. Mm -hmm. Right from childhood, as a girl child is growing, proper nutrition, one will wonder why nutrition. This girl child is growing to a woman and she needs her pelvis growing well so that she can be able to stand labor and childbirth. Okay? We need her in school. Why in school? It will help her, first of all, to delay getting pregnant. It will also help her get empowerment, mm -hmm. get the sexual and reproductive knowledge and rights and be able to stand up for herself. She needs to be supported in that area. Okay? How else can we prevent? A lot is being done by the country. The Ministry of Health has upgraded health center threes to fours mm -hmm. to be able to access health care nearer to the people so that people can access emergency obstetric care. So people being able to access care in a timely way is very important. People attending antenatal care so that screening can be done. We've seen that women who are shorter, especially less than 150 centimeters, mm. one and a half meters, mm. are more prone to get in the to condition. Get in the condition. Women who have bigger babies, mm. babies more than 3.5, may get what is called a cephalopelvic disproportion, a disproportion between the size of the baby and the size of the pelvis, mm -hmm. so which can prolong labor or even cause obstruction. So mm -hmm. these are detected early and the birth plan is made. Yes. Okay. Doctor, um, this particular condition is one that I believe in native societies or really remote, remote societies can be even related to witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And so these women will stay away from seeking medical attention because of that notion. Then you talked about the stigma and that stigma will still cause some women to close themselves in the room, pad themselves until uh, Lord knows the last minute when the condition cannot be really arrested in time when they are brought to medical attention but then there's also those who desire to seek the treatment however access to that treatment has been a challenge um, especially for the remote areas of our country and so it begs the question how are we ensuring that one we are having awareness of the condition and that it's a medical condition none otherwise but a medical condition to eradicating the stigma and through extending the services closer to those that we believe are in dire need of it okay a lot is being done you know fistula some years back was a condition that people did not know much about but when you talk of fistula now many people are able to related to yeah. constant leakage of urine mm -hmm. so that shows there's awareness we have a national fistula technical working group at the ministry of health and this has really increased awareness about fistula mm -hmm. it has helped equip hospitals post health workers that are knowledgeable and skilled in handling fistula and not only that it also works with partners mm -hmm. to increase awareness, to have health camps in different areas of the country so that people get access to th those services. So we've had on media, on radio, mm -hmm. announcements calling people with those symptoms to come and access care. And these days we are getting people coming earlier. There are times you would find someone has stayed with her condition for the last 20 years because mm -hmm. she didn't know where to go and she had never heard that such a condition could be managed. But now we are getting people coming much earlier, mm -hmm. which shows that people are more aware about availability of treatment areas and the fact that the condition can be treated. Okay, yes. all right. Um, when it comes to treatment, I know that it also comes down to equipment and uh, skilled manpower to be able to manage it across the country. Mm. Where do we stand in regards to that? I think as Uganda, we've moved a great step. We are one of those countries that have fistula surgeons. 
Right now we have over 15 active fistula surgeons trained specifically as fistula surgeons. Mm -hmm. Seven of these have been accredited by the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics, or FIGO, and four of them we are fortunate to have in the Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital. Mm -hmm. So not only that, Mulago has been accredited by FIGO still as a training site. So training other fistula surgeons. So as far as human resource development is concerned, there's capacity for that. that there are different op hospitals that have been equipped with by the Ministry of Health to be able to access, for people to be able to access these services. We have regional referrals, they are able to handle fistula. Mm -hmm. So human resource, the equipment, and the partners that we deal with. So there are partners that help in different areas. There's the area of treatment, mm. when, the dis when the condition has happened. But after treatment, what happens? Sometimes people may wonder, how do I go back? After 20 years, you've lived in your t area of isolation. How do you go back? So over time, people who are psychosocial support uh -huh. yeah. so there's the physical part there's the psychosocial part. aspect as well so within the hospital many times we deal with the, with the physical aspect mm -hmm. however we have linkage to partners that continue and look after that psychosocial support we have a partner called Terewude and we do refer our patients that we've been handling after the surgery they do help them to reintegrate back into society, being accepted back into their families. Mm -hmm. Because their families can also reject isolate them, them yeah. reject them. They help to reintegrate into community, become useful citizens. They give them skills. They have art skills that they carry on, small businesses that give them self, improved self-esteem and improved quality of life. So a holistic care, right from the hospital and after. Okay, yes. holistic care, Dr. Nawunya. It does include men. Sure, It sure. does include men. Sure, Let's sure, talk sure. about the <laughs> men and their role in this uh, uh, fistula, you know, uh, fight. I'm glad you've talked about the men. Mm. Although I come from a women and neonatal hospital, mm -hmm. the men are a very big component. And as far as fistula is concerned, I believe there are men out there listening. Mm -hmm. And this is really for them. Remember this obstetric fistula is following childbirth. What does it take to have a child? A man. A man mm -hmm. and a woman, mm -hmm. sure. So the man is very important. Right through the stages. You wonder when a baby is born, how important is that man? Mm. To ensure nutrition, this baby feeds well, grows well, is able to grow into a woman that will be able to go through childbirth. Mm. This baby is able to go through school, is able to get married at the right time, mm. or have pregnancy at the right time. There are practices where young girls are given out in marriage. So we need the men to support the re <laughs> remove, removal of such practices mm -hmm. so yeah. that they are not part of the people pushing these young girls into marriage. When a partner is pregnant, remember pregnancy normally is up to nine months. So in that time, the two plan together. Mm. They plan, have a birth plan, so that they know should labor start at the right time, this is how it will be done. But sometimes labor starts even before. So there is need to be ready. Mm -hmm. To be ready, how will the wife get to the to hospital, which hospital, depending on the conditions that have been identified during pregnancy. Yes. So it needs to be there. So we really advise men to move with their partners, go to the hospital, look and see, are there any complications that could happen? Mm. Could it be stature? Could it be the size of your baby? Mm -hmm. Could it be other conditions that 
could predispose her to fistula so that she gets access to care. So that is really on the preventive side. However, unfortunately, should the wife get a fistula, should the man go away? Which they do. I mean, just giving birth to more than two kids, they, they, they leave the women. How much more such a condition? This is your wife, your partner, mm. okay? Don't uh, abandon her mm -hmm. because this is not the end. Something can be done. Take her to hospital. Look out for those areas that can support your partner. They are referral systems mm -hmm. to places where fistula surgery can take place. And during the whole process, you know it is a process. Not all fistula may be treated 100%. Some of them fail. In nine out of 10, mm -hmm. they get successful surgery. Mm -hmm. So the husband needs to be there, the man needs to be there through the process and also the process of reintegration. As she goes back to the family, because they may uh, try to say, but this is the wife who has been having this issue. How are you bringing her back? We need to get you another woman. <laughs> yes, mm. so that is very important. Getting her skills, getting her useful. So the support of the husband is very important. Mm -hmm. So the men are very important in this fight. Okay, yes. loud and clear for the men. Now let's talk about the fistula camp that you have organized at uh, the specialized hospital in Mulago. Uh, tell us more about this exercise, the significance of it on the health burden fight. Okay, as Mulago specialized women and neonatal hospital, we have arranged a medical camp specifically for fistula, mm -hmm. knowing the burden that is there in the country and the consequences to the women. What happens to them? It really touches us. Mm -hmm. We are a specialized hospital in women issues. We want to contribute to the reduction of this burden. So we'll be having a camp from the 8th of this month, which is this Friday, up to the 15th. So during this camp on the 8th, we'll be having screening. So we've called for women to come, mm -hmm. those who have symptoms of fistula, constant leakage of urine, uncontrolled feces, so that they are able to come and have screening because one needs to screen and know is it the problem? Mm -hmm. What can we do now? So those that qualify for surgery will be admitting them. Okay and will be carrying out surgery throughout the whole week okay. to be able to do that. And that is uh, free surgery? Yes, that is free to the patients. Okay. So th this is giving back to the society, yes. giving back to people who have been put aside mm -hmm. by society. We want to reach out to the women, to let them know that these services are available, that this condition is treatable. Okay. They shouldn't suffer at home when a place like this can be able to handle them. All right, so the camp is starting on the 8th of December? Yes. Please. And it's running all the way to? The 15th, the 15th. of December. All right, yes. um, those that will be uh, screened and found ne deemed necessary for surgery, you'll be offering them free surgeries yes, uh, courtesy surgery. of the hospital. Well, that's a very good initiative. I b you have brought Christmas early. Sure. Thank this you very much. This is our Christmas gift back to Ugandans, yeah. back to the women that really mean a lot to us. Yeah. Yes. Well, Dr. Nabunya, in your closing remark, and uh, since we're in the spirit of uh, giving back to community, uh, what's your Christmas message to, to the women, especially uh, focusing on this disease burden? Okay, thank you. Christmas gift, Ali. Yeah. Uh, this is wonderful. It's very hard to package in just a few words, mm. but before I say the Christmas gift, I wish to appreciate our Minister of Health for the great work that is being done in raising awareness and making sure that services are available. So to the women out there, these services are available. Fistula is treatable, but more importantly, it is preventable. Mm -hmm. So as they come, I know they will come with partners, they will come with other people who will also learn be able to learn more about fistula and what can be done to prevent it and how they are going to be treated. Mm -hmm. So let them not fear to come to the women's hospital. Treatment is going to be free for them. Okay. 
Yes. All right. Let them come so that they have a, a safe and nice Christmas to them. Yes. By that time, they'll be recovering mm -hmm. and they'll be back in their families. Okay. Yes. That is uh, Dr. Evelyn Navunya. Thank you so, so much for that Christmas gift that has come early. And she is the executive director of the Mulago Specialized and Neonatal Hospital. And that camp starts on the 8th. So if you know someone or who knows somebody, uh, you know, affected by this condition, please get them to be a part of that medical camp. That marks the end of this conversation. We take a breather. One more conversation coming your way don't go